Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Strahd campaign. And today I'm going to show you a hack on fixing your walls to work, those curved walls to work, your staircases to work, so your characters can actually go up and down the stairs and even use the multi-level token. Now, the uh, foundry system uses either a grid or a hexagon system. Most of our maps are on a, a grid-based system, but when you're dealing with circles, and get a little bit of a problem, you know, how do I get my character into one of these circles? And if you draw the map correctly to use the Fog of War, it doesn't come out right. So we have to give up one for the other. Do I want really good Fog of War and everything dynamically looking perfect? Or do I want to actually be able to have my characters move in areas that don't align with my grid? And I'll show you what I mean here. So what better map to use than the Windmill map from Curse of Strahd? This is actually the map that comes with the game. Uh, I have VTT Assets module, which I recommend. I'll link that below that pulls in stuff from D&D &D Beyond, including the maps, and the community there has already pre-drawn the walls. They've done a phenomenal job. Now, uh, let me demonstrate with one of our characters here. So I have Herhan. He is our Paladin Knight. And you can see they did a really good job of drawing the walls for this. The dynamic shadows work really well. Herhan's running around the outside of the windmill in a kind of crazy, fervish way. And the problem doesn't happen until we get inside. So even when we go inside, the problem is, is the paladin, he hears some noise upstairs and he wants to run upstairs and he gets this way up the stairs and he can't go any farther. Okay. Oh, I don't know how I did that. Oh, you know what? I, you can move it at an angle. I didn't know this. I just learned something as we're doing this. So if I put both arrows, the up arrow and the left arrow at the same time, he can move diagonally. So I just figured out how to move diagonally. Boom. I just figured this out as we're doing this video. Um, and that may have solved the problem right there. Wow. Diagonal movement. I went to all this work and created this hack <laughs> because I'm such a knob. I didn't know you can move diagonally. I'm going to show you the hack anyway, what I did to solve this, this problem. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem at all. Wow. Talk about embarrassing. Well, anyway, I'm going to just show you the hack at all uh, anyway. So let's take a look at my walls. and. <laughs> <laughs> what I did to solve this non-problem. Wow. You know, my characters don't know this either because they're doing the same thing. They're like, I can't move to that square. And now all I have to do is say, well, press the up arrow and the left arrow at the same time and you move, can move diagonally. Wow. Well, let me show you what my problem was. And I might as well show you the module um, multi-level token. So I, <laughs> I wanted my character to go up to this square and then over. And so what... <laughs> This is unbelievably silly at this point. Uh, what I did was I deleted uh, this. You're gonna, you're just gonna go. Oh my gosh, Parm, you did a bunch of more work that you didn't even need to need to do. I'm gonna move this over here like this. <laughs> I'm gonna put a glass wall in here, and I'm gonna put another glass wall in here. Hold on, like that. And now my character can easily, if I go back to my character, he can easily go to the upper square. Oh, let me just click on him. He can go to this square and go here. But all of a sudden, you're like looking through the wall and you've kind of like broken the fog of war. Well, I got a solution for that. And here's my little hack. So I go into the wall and I add another wall. I add one of those, like, you know, the mask icon, the curtain wall. And I just put that right here on the edge, right through here. And this does two things. It protects the fog of war on the outside and the inside. And my character can still go to this corner here. So, uh, oh, I didn't do that very well, did I? Uh, let me fix that with my walls because I don't want any light leakage there. I'm going to shorten up this wall here. I'm going to shorten up this wall here. I'm going to move this, this wall here. Oh, my ping thing's going off. I'm going to move this wall here, and that should eliminate my light leakage issue. So let's go back to my player really quick. 
and he is going to move up there. And you can see I don't have light leakage, right? So the there's no light leakage. I'm still I'm using that one kind of curtain wall so he can move into it, but I'm not getting any of that that light leakage. And it works for the outside too. If you look at the outside, I've that uh, that using that one wall I put in there keeps the light from going in. I have the glass wall so he can't get into that that square. So it was a combination of using the glass wall uh, and the and the uh, the mask wall to address this corner issue, which I guess not knowing that I could move my players can move diagonally is really not an issue. But let me go on and show you the multi-level token uh, really well and how this works. I love this. This is definitely a module that you're going to need to get if you're going to have two floors in a map. The Let me show you the module really quickly, which one it is. It's called Multi-Level Token Module. I put a link down below. It's right here, Multi-Level Token Module. Make sure that you enable that. And you're just going to use the drawing tool over here and you're going to select the square box. And I'm going to draw a square box right here and in here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to make sure it's invisible. I don't want my players to see this box. And I'm going to click on the little gear icon. Now, multi-level token updated this before. Um, this didn't work this way. Um, I had to type in a command in the text. So this is a new feature in here. And I want this to be an in and out. That means when players step into this square, they're going to transport to the next floor. And then when they trans they the, when they step into the square on that floor, they're going to transport back. And I'm going to call this identifier is a second because it's going to go to the second floor. Um, I'm going to set scene to local. So this restricts the teleport and cloning regions to match only within the regions on the same scene. You can actually have this jump scenes. You can load a bunch of scenes and have your character jump scenes as well. Um, and there's some other features in here. I'm just going to use this teleport feature for now. So I'm going to hit click update. And so now when my character, and I'll just move my character into the, in here, uh, and he moves into my nice hacked wall area. I'm not going to move him diagonally. i got to use it now, right? And he steps into the second, into the square that I've drawn this square there and use the multi-level token feature. Nothing's going to happen. Let me just double check this. Nothing's going to happen. Boy, I'm just really having a, a pretty, pretty lousy day of it, aren't I? So settings, second, second, local scene. Let me go over here because I know the other one. Oh, I don't have the second floor over here. So I got to put that. That's why he's not going anywhere because there's nowhere for him to go. Um, so I got to put another one of those in here. So I'm going to put another square right here. There we go. This one's already grayed out. I'm going to right click on it, hit the gear icon, click settings, go to multi-level. Uh, oh, it's all set up correctly the way I want it. Update it. Just make sure that's correct. Settings. Let's put a second in here just in case. Should be in there. Why is the multi-level? In, out, local scene, second, update. Okay, it should work now. So let's try our character over here again and see if he goes through there. Yep, there he goes. So if I zoom out, you can see actually what this is doing. I'll unclick this. So I've got a square here. Um, I'm using the multi-level token. I've designated the three-letter command to be second. There's an arrow showing both in and out, so it's going to go in here and out. So if my character steps down into this, he's going to pop up over here. And if he steps into this, he's going to pop up over here. So you can go up multiple floors. I'll just take my character up to the next floor. You can see there he is. He's on the third floor. I even am going up to the, the ladder to the attic. So I have him in the attic. He can go downstairs. Here's the third floor. He can go down to the second floor. There he is on the first floor, and he can leave this windmill. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you, might as well show you the hacks I did on the other floors. Uh, this one here, I just 
put a little glass wall here because there's a window here. And I just went around this as a square. I did the same thing over here. Initially, I had it so that they would have to kind of step out here. Um, on this one here, I just wanted to put this stairwell to go up here to the top floor. So I just made this little stick out wall and then put the shadow wall right here. So those are just some hacks that you can do. I mean, this one is a good hack because um, I could move my character into here and I wanted, you know, this is a really small space. So I just moved this out and put the, sh the shadow wall there so that he, that the, no light's getting in when he's stepping into the square. So that's, that's a hack that you can still use. Um, my diagonal hacks though, uh, boy, that was, that was embarrassing. Well, it'll, it'll make for some, I guess the joke's on me. Anyway, um, I hope this was a helpful video. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't helpful at all. Maybe I just wasted your time and mine. But there is some, I mean, showing you these things, you might find an area where it might be useful to use, you know, a combination of these walls and the kind of the mask walls. And at least uh, you got to use, if you didn't know, learn how to use the multi-level token. Anyway, this is Parm King signing off. And may your all your rolls be critical 20s. And if they're not, and they're critical 1, you roll in the critical failure table. I just rolled a critical one on this video, so um, I'm going to have to roll on my critical failure table. Maybe, um, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Anyway, I just rolled a one on this video. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you find any of these videos useful. Please go ahead and maybe not like this video. I wish you would like it. So I don't think I'm just going to go cry now. Thanks very much for, for watching, sticking a square peg into a whole video. Oh, well, I'll, I'll try again. That's all I can do at this point.